Hey guys. So, guess whose audio wasn't working for like the first 34 minutes of their stream? Yeah, this guy. <clears throat> and my, uh. Also, I had the box that weird on the stream, so that's why it's like cut off at the bottom. <laughs> it does get fixed! Um, but I am just gonna do post commentary for this because I can't go back. Um, so, yeah, we're clearing out the fisherman side just to get that experience and some money. Um, before we go do more important things. It's been a few days, so I apologize for not remembering what was going on. But I figured Reigns could use some uh, experience here. Because my thought was I was just going to use um, Foxy for the two water route. So I was just gonna give Reigns here all the experience so he can get some levels. I believe that's what I was trying to do. Because he learned Solar Beam at level 42? I believe it's level 42. Let me double check. Chazad! No, that's the wrong way. Venus are. Uh, 65! He learned Solar Beam on 65. So, yeah, that's a problem. Um, I end up giving him the TM, minor spoiler, because none of my guys get that high, because none of my guys ever get that high. Like, uh, Charizard learns Flamethrower at 46. He didn't learn Flamethrower by the end of this. I gave him Fire Blast, and we just kind of rolled with that. Um, yeah, 42 Charmeleon, had I not evolved him. And 38 Charmander. So, I mean, like... You... It's almost better if you keep him Charmander until he learns Flamethrower. I think Bulbasaur is like the same way. Nope, Solar Beam at 48. Holy crap. Um, I don't even think my Blastoise got Hydro Pump. Oh, 52 Hydro Pump. Yeah, my Blastoise didn't even get Hydro Pump. So, that's, yeah. My guys like never get that high. 47 for War Turtle and 42 for Squirtle. So, I mean, it's almost better to keep them low. Unevolved, rather. Because problems galore here. So, yeah, we're just decimating these. Uh, these fishies. Man, Butterfree really sucks. <laughs> Gusta, or Gust, Gusta 28. But, uh, Psybeam at 34. And that's his best attack. So I think Beedrill like suffers from the thing. thing. Pin Missile at 30. So the female is dying, which is a problem. So, uh, yeah. We've got like 30 more minutes of this. I'm terrible with the post commentary, guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 
Uh, I still... So I finished the game. I haven't got Mewtwo yet. So if you want to see me get Mewtwo... I mean, it's really just going through Cerulean Cave. And using repels until I get there. And just throwing a Master Ball at him. So it's kind of pointless. I think I only got Mewtwo... Once. But then I never used him, so. <clears throat> yeah. I wonder. Oh no, he's in Heart Gold and Soul Silver. What really sucks is they never really gave you a legit way to get Mew. Like Emerald had a had a special event where you could actually go get Mew, but unless you like hack in that item, um, you can't get him anymore because it was a. Uh, like one of those you had to go to an event or something to get the item. And they did a special giveaway in Gold Silver Crystal. Oh, and they did do a special giveaway with Red, Blue, Yellow. Or you could do the, the glitch. Interesting stuff. I've gotten new before. Using the gl- using, um... I want to say it was called a Monster Brain? Yes. Yep, that was it. So it was a special thing that you could put in your Game Boy and then you plugged your game into it and then you could give yourself any Pokemon, have his trainer ID set to anything for gold, silver, crystal purposes. Um... And you could, uh, give them any moves you wanted. Give yourself all the gym badges. Max money, any items. Like, it was, it was pretty neat. And I use that to get Mew all the time. One of my friends had one growing up. Yeah, so for Gen 1, Editor allows user to edit name, rival's name, money, time, badges, Pokemon, and items. With Gen 2, you could edit the clock, ID, seen and caught your Pokedex, badges, gender if you're playing Crystal, um, balls, items, key items, TMs. Was pretty cool. And you're hearing a wind tunnel because the female decided to turn on the fan. So I'll just back that up a little bit. You might still be able to hear it. I'm going to put some music in on this one. Um... And we'll probably do some remixes of some stuff. Uh, because I have it, and <laughs> why not, you know? So, I don't remember what we're doing here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, with these guys, you can give them any drink. It can be a fresh water soda pop or lemonade, but you have to buy one of them. And go through one of the uh, the four ways into Saffron City, and that's how you get in there. Uh -uh. And then I just go check my lemonades, and one was missing. 
there's another thing you can do with those, and that's giving them to this chick who's like by Celadon Mart or something. And she'll give you Ice Beam. I know Ice Beam was like the important one. She'll give you three different TMs depending on which drink you give her. Right there, we just got Psychic. Because Abra, or Kadabra, rather, because that's what we have. Doesn't learn Psychic until level 38, which is fairly quick, but we just, just to give him a little, little edge there, and I mean, nobody else was going to use it, so. The cool thing about the traded Pokemon is that... They don't get the move list penalty that just regular evolutions do. The annoying thing about the trade Pokemon is you have to trade it with somebody! Which is really dumb. And I don't think should be a thing, but they were like, hey, you should make friends. So, there you have it. Does he keep it at 30? Oh. Thirty-six, oh. Oh, they did bump it up. So it's red, blue, oh, 42. No, 38. 38. And then gold, silver, crystal, it's still 38. And then, um... Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald, it's 36. And that's Fire, Red, Leaf, Green. And then with Diamond and Pearl and Heart, Gold, Soul, Silver, they moved Psychic to level 40. Because they're a bunch of jerks. And then with Black and White, it's 46. XY, they moved it back to 38. And then with Sun and Moon, it's back at, it's at 38 as well, so. Yeah. I mean, you can beat the game with low to mid 40, guys, so. I don't. Why, I don't understand why they have Pokemon that learn moves at like level 1000. It doesn't make sense to me. Because that's a lot of grinding in Rare Candies. And Rare Candies just make your Pokemon weaker. Because you don't get the EV stuff. Which I don't really care about the EV stuff. But with Rare Candies you can really tell. <laughs> like, you start losing stats. So, that's a bit of a problem. It is a nice way if you just want to get something to evolve or you want to get a move. But uh, I prefer not to do that sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, like, Vulpex here learns Flamethrower at 35, which is already infinitely better. Then Charizard. Growlithe learns it at level 50, unfortunately. And then, of course, the Pokemon that evolve with stones, except for Eevees. Um, quit learning stuff once you evolve them. So for Nidoking, Nidoking will learn Thrash at level 23. Right here we're just buying um, some more Lemonades. Yeah, he evolves at level 16 to Nidoran. 
So if you give him a Moonstone by 20, at 23, then you'll get Thrash. But then you miss out on Horn Drill, which is an instant KO as long as you're not fighting something that's faster or higher level than you. You'll miss out on Focus Energy and Fury Attack, which Fury Attack kind of sucks anyway, and Focus Energy is garbage, so... Well, at least with red, blue, yellow. And Gen 2. And Gen 3, they added Helping Hand and Flatter. Which, Flatter confuses target. But raises its special attack. And then Helping Hand just helps out your partner when you're double battling. And then they added Poison Jab and Toxic Spikes. And 4th gen... Really the only things that matter. Yeah, that seems like to be all they added. I mean, Horn Drill's still on there, but... Yeah, you just... <laughs> and when you're ground poison and you don't really learn any ground moves I mean you could I believe pretty sure you can teach him earthquake and then just like kill everything and in gen 1 there's not any decent poison attacks like at all he can learn blizzard blizzard ice beam water gun hyper beam payday Submission, Counter, Seismic Toss, Skull Dash, Rock Slide, Bide, S Surf, you can Surf on a Nitto King, that seems counterproductive. Strength, Double Team Mimic, Bubble Beam, Mega Punch, Mega Kick, Toxic, you can just teach him Horn Drill. Maybe he can't learn Earthquake. Thunderbolt, Thunder. No, he learns Earthquake. Fissure. Fire Blast. He can do pretty much anything you want him to do, but he'd suck at it. Submission might be good on him, though. Uh, now we're at Sifco. Because I totally forgot this whole area was a thing when I was playing through it. I have no idea how I forgot this. Uh, I was thinking that this happened during, like, the whole Pokemon Tower thing. So we're just going to be going floor by floor, eliminating the, the rockets, and then I do... Then I start taking the warps. That way I... I don't miss anybody. I still might have missed somebody. I don't think I did, though. So, I am going to put... Oh, I'm sure you guys are seeing it. My little smiley face thing is over my real face. Because if you're watching the video, and you're hearing my voice, and it's not syncing up with... me... in the video, it's going to be really weird. And like desinky, so I mean, at least this way it uh kind of remedies that just a little bit. So let's. Did Jason just get a tweeter? Oh no, apparently he's had a tweeter. That's well, weird. I guess Jade just followed him. I'll follow him, I guess. Give you a follow. Posted a link to something. Let's see what it is. Oh, it's just a Trump thing.
So, Jason is very political when he's not doing the videos. So is Ragnats. So, if it wasn't for the whole video thing, I don't think I'd have a Facebook. Because I just, I don't care. <clears throat> Especially about all the meme things. Like, I mean, I post some memes, but still, it's just like, these are really dumb. Um. But, so, E3, I normally don't talk about E3 too much, but they, Capcom showed Resident Evil 2 Remake. Like, they did the demo thing, they showed off the demo. And it looks amazing. And I'm probably gonna buy it. I know it's super sad, but that's probably gonna happen. And you guys are sitting there and you're like, but you haven't finished, like, any of the other... I know. I know. We did the stream of the first one on Valentine's Day a couple years ago. Didn't do the second one. Haven't done the third one. And the third one's my favorite. And I have zero and one remake on Steam, and I've streamed one remake. Um, and I streamed a little bit of Zero. But I haven't done them. They're on my list, because I want to do it, kind of like how I did Onimushu, if you guys are watching that right now. Over at my channel. Um, so I streamed it through once. And just like a slow playthrough. And then I went back and I screwed up. That's why I had to do it three times. But I went back and I like speed ran it. I say speed run, it's not really a speed run, but it's just over two hours. Because uh, the game's made to be beaten within three hours. All the Resident Evils are that way, uh, except with four. Starting with four, they're not. Um, and I haven't played through those games in a long time. Um, like two, it's been probably a decade since I played through two. And three, I don't know if I've finished a playthrough in like ten years. I usually get to the clock tower and then die. Or just like, find something else to do. Because I beat it all eight times to get all the special endings. And it's... It just, like, after that, I'm like, okay, I've got everything out of this game. But to show you guys, um, I would, for three at least, I would want to beat it in under three hours. Um, probably show a mercenary run. Or the way I do mercenary mode. And then... Uh, show off all the endings. So I would have to go through and beat it eight times. To show off those little end card things. Which, I mean, you can find on like the wiki and stuff. But... I feel like I wouldn't be... I would be doing you a disservice if I didn't show you that. Because you could go look at the wiki, but if it's just like all in one video and you're just like, oh, okay, cool. Now I don't have to go to the wiki. And if you're choosing to watch my video, that's super great. And you should like not have to worry about all that crap. So that's why we have it. I haven't done that, because I'd have to beat it a crap ton of times. One, I'm just being lazy with. Same with one remake. Zero, I've only beaten once, so I would have to beat it like two or three times. All of these games, I would have to beat like two or three times before I would be comfortable with running through them to get that sub three hour. Um, at least twice. Run through them at least twice before I recorded it. And it would have to be, like when I did Onimushu, I finished it 
And then that same day, I did the two other playthroughs immediately after and streamed those as well. So, I mean, those were like back to back, so I knew exactly where to go, what to do, blah, 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 who to talk to, you know, all that stuff. Not that there's anybody to talk to in Onimushu, but still. Um, and that's just, you know, they're very puzzly, and I forget some things. It's not... It's different with, like, Zelda, where, well, like, Ocarina of Time, at least, where I can just pick it up and just go, uh, and not really have to worry about anything. And I've probably beaten Ocarina of Time less than I've beaten Resident Evil 3, um, but with 3, it's just very... Just how combat is, it's really easy to get screwed. Um, there's a couple parts where it's really easy to die and just really easy to get just beat up in a corner. So, if you're out of practice with it, or even like hitting the doors, like as soon as you get near that loading, there little loading points and stuff like if you don't have that down it's it becomes a problem at least for me anyway and I know two like Resident Evil 2 I know how to do it like Leon's A I know how to do it really well because that's the one I've played the most Leon's A and Claire's B uh, the other side of that which apparently is now the canon I heard some people talking, um, and they said, well, Claire's B, or Claire's A and Leon's B is canon, because Sherry mentions this very specific thing in 6 that doesn't happen the other way, so this has to be the way that you do it. And I was like, okay, well, that's stupid, but whatever. Um... I always assumed Leon's A was canon, and everybody else did. And, like, even the novels have Leon's A as being the canon. Or being what they went with. Um. So, yeah. It's just... I'm out of practice. And I need to find time to... Just really sit down and crank them out. Which, I, I mean, I could be doing right now. But... I've got monthlies that I'm backed up on. This being one of them. Uh, which is... You know, and I've been sitting on this footage for a couple days now. And, like, I need to go back and do audio for this because I was a dummy. And I'm just putting it off. I know it's, I like, I played God of War. Like, recorded some God of War Ghost of Sparta. Um, so, you have that to look forward to. And then I started uploading Duke Nukem. Uh, Duke It Out in DC, which was recorded a long time ago. I've been sitting on this footage. Let's see. Since December. When did I finish it? December. Yeah, I did Duke It Out in DC in two days. Um, and then Life's a Beach. I've had since February. finished in March which those are two expansions to Duke Nukem 3D that were released with the Megaton edition which doesn't exist anymore um, which is sad I mean they weren't great like the nuclear winter stuff I uploaded in December you know that was part of uh, Megaton and those aren't great by any means. They're not like the best things ever. But it was more content. And with World Tour they they cut it. For whatever reason. I'm not sure how the rights went because it was made it wasn't made by 3D Realms, it was made by somebody else. So that could have something to do with it. Kinda like Hellfire for Diablo, like, you can't really find that anymore because it wasn't made by Blizzard, it was made by somebody else. 
So, yeah, those are gone. All three of those are missing from World Tour, but World Tour, uh, which I just picked up because it was on Steam sale for $5. I was like, okay, why not? Um, World Tour has some pretty cool stuff in it that I'm probably going to talk about when I do World Tour. Um, they added a level select from the get-go. You got a new game, and then you can pick any episode, just like normal, but then you can pick the individual levels, which I think is really cool, and like really just would help people speedrun, I guess, or at least like practice it a little. Probably not so much speedrun because you don't have the same items and all of that stuff, but I think it's really cool. They also got the original level designers to come back, and John St. John, Duke's voice actor, to come back and do another episode, or chapter, or campaign, whatever you want to call it. Full nine levels and everything, so that's super cool. Uh, and then they gave it, like, a graphical, like, eyeshadow. Um, they didn't really... Like, do an uplift or anything, but they did change. Gave it a little bit of an update. Um, which, guys, Gearbox, Light Bloom, use it sparingly. It's not, it doesn't need to be everywhere. It's pretty atrocious. But they put it, like, everywhere. And, like, some of the new textures look really good, but then there's this nasty-ass light bloom all over the place. A cool thing they added, though, if you hit the C button, which you can rebind all the keys, but if you hit the C button, it turns it off, and you get to play Vanilla Duke. Which, you know, I was playing around with that just to see what all they changed, and they added some pretty cool stuff and a lot of detail and stuff. Um, so if you can look past the ugly ass light bloom, then you're sitting pretty. Ha 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 ha. But yeah, it's it's pretty cool. So that's coming up after I get uh, Duke It Out in DC and Life's a Beach uploaded, which DC's 13 videos because I got lost at one point. And Beach is nine videos because I cut out me getting lost. So I think we're fighting Giovanni right now. I haven't really been paying attention. I think that's what's that. Let's see. That was the last one? No, it's the scientist. Okay. Giovanni should be coming. Maybe he's in the uh, next video. Maybe we didn't get that far. Yeah, we didn't get that far. And here's about the time that I notice that my sound's not working. And I'm like, because I started chewing gum. And I was like, how loud is this gum going to be? And then was like, oh crap, there's no audio. So... There you go. There's me doing post commentary. I know it's super bad. I'm sorry, guys. But uh, yeah, thanks for thanks for watching. If you actually did stick around and watch this one, so cool stuff in the future. Resident Evil 2 remake. Go check it out.